When most of us are learning to code, the things that we focus on in the beginning are things like what is the best language, what's the best course, or how to memorize more lead code problems. I was lucky enough early on to realize that programming is not about memorization or knowing every intricate detail about what you're doing. There's a specific way in which great programmers approach problem solving, which is not only applicable to coding, but every kind of problem solving in the world. What even is programming? Well, when you're programming, what you're essentially doing is trying to speak to a machine, which is very different from talking to a human but there's a lot of similarities. If you're speaking English and you're trying to speak someone who speaks Chinese, unless you speak the same language, you won't be able to understand each other. That's exactly the case with programming as well. In order to be a great programmer, you need to understand how to speak machine language, essentially. And the way machines communicate is not using Python, not using Java, but the language of logic. And the thing is, if you learn to speak the language of logic, the benefits go way beyond programming. Who is a programmer? Great programmers are strictly analytical. And when they're solving problems, they leave emotions completely out of the picture. There's no room for getting mad at your computer when it doesn't do what you want, because a computer is just a logical machine that does exactly, precisely, what you've told it to do. They're precise to the point where as humans, it seems crazy that they wouldn't understand what I'm trying to tell it just because I forget a semicolon, but that is just what you have to deal with when you're communicating with a machine. You also need to be extremely okay with being ignorant. What separates great programmers from new programmers like me is not that they know a lot more, it's just that they know how to look for answers more efficiently and ask better questions. Great programmers understand that it's never possible to completely understand everything that your code is doing under the hood because programming in computer science is all about abstraction. Let me tell you a little secret. When you're programming, as in when you're writing JavaScript code, for example, you're not actually speaking to the computer directly. Well, actually happens when you write code and you run it, there's a different program called the compiler, which transforms the code into machine code, which is then even further transformed into something else and eventually into binary because binary is actually the only thing that computers can understand. It's more like you're speaking through like three different translation. You speak English, someone translates it to Chinese and then someone translates it to Japanese. But the great thing here is that even though I have no idea what is going on through this translation process, I can still code. I can still write commands and my computer is going to understand it because of abstraction. And so if you're the type of person where you always need to understand exactly Exactly every single little detail of what's going on, which is exactly who I used to be, and this is like unnatural to me. You can't worry about it. You need to be okay with the fact, and you need to trust the fact that the compilers and all these libraries that you're using and everything has been done correctly, and that it just works, and you only need to worry about the specific part of the problem that you're dealing with. And when it comes to actually writing programs, the way you should approach it is through the divide and conquer paradigm. Essentially what this means is that usually when you're writing a program, especially after you're like very very beginner project, the things that you're trying to do are very complex. And there's a great temptation always just go approach a problem head on and try to do everything at once. The way you should actually approach big problems is by first dividing it into smaller parts and focusing on each problem individually and then at the end combining them into the final solution. For example, right now I'm trying to build this Netflix clone. The purpose of it is that it's going to look like Netflix but also show films and shows from other networks, not just Netflix. Obviously this is a pretty big problem. If I just try to do all of this at once, I think my head would probably explode. So the way I'm approaching it at the first, I'm only focused on just figuring out how to access the data that I need. And then I will only focus on how to build the first page of the UI. Then I will only focus on how to get these films to show up on the front end like they do on Netflix. Just focusing on each individual problem individually and then only at the end focusing on combining them into one. And this approach brings us directly into step three, which is starting with an MEP. This is probably the mindset that has helped me the most. We need trying to build something big, you probably have this big grand idea of something that you want to reach like I do with my Netflix project. And there's sort of all these sub problems with varying degrees of complexity. But in the beginning, you need to be okay with just building the simplest functioning version of that problem as you possibly can. Very first version of my Netflix project is just getting the data, i.e. the information about the shows and the films that I want to show on the site to show up on my terminal window. It's not very pretty, but it is a working version of what I want to achieve. It could be an absolute mess at first and that is okay because then in the second iteration, you go through and solve the next 
priority order of problems. Only at the very end, I'll focus on the very niche problems of how to make a nav bar look exactly like Netflix, for example. This is also an example of what's known as iterative problem solving. And it's not just used in programming, it's used by, for example, the best business consultants in the world. It's all about focusing on what's most important first, building a working MVP or minimum viable product, and then just iterating, 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 and getting closer, closer, and closer to the end product. By the way, I have a full video coming about how I build this project once it's actually done one day. So if you don't want to miss that, definitely go down there and subscribe to the channel. And while you're down there, hit the like button. There's no need to smash. Just a little tap is fine and will make me and my like button very happy. So the next step is to use Google a lot. And no, I don't mean Googling how to get more matches on Tinder or some cute cat pictures. What I mean is Googling the answer to every single question that you come across when you're trying to solve coding problems. Whenever you get an error and you get stuck, obviously try to debug it, try to figure out what's happening. But if you get stuck, just Google it. Seriously, great programmers don't think that their egos are too big for them to admit that they're wrong and just to Google the answer. There's so many specific things and the specific problems that you'll come across when you're programming that you'll never know the answers to all of it. It's okay. No one will ever know that you didn't know how to write that regular expression or how to do a for loop in Java. You can pretend that you wrote it yourself. No one has to know. Seriously, I still Google very basic questions all the time. And let me tell you a little secret. I still don't know how to write basic SQL commands. Whenever I use SQL, I always just Google even the most basic commands. Commands are just weird and like texty and like auto increment, not no. This remains between us, right? And the final part about thinking like a programmer is to expect problems and be patient. To get back to my Netflix project, there's probably been like a thousand errors in my code already, just with the very basic iteration that I'm doing at first. Normally when I'm coding, if my code passes the first time without any problem, I'm like, amazed because that happens like one out of a hundred times. My expectation whenever I run any piece of code is that there's going to be errors. That is simply the life of a programmer. And great programmers have the mindset that mistakes and problems are not problems. They are just opportunities for you to learn. Every time there's an error, there's probably something that you learn about your code that you could be improving. That's going to make you a better programmer because next time you'll know that, oh yeah, I need a semicolon here or, oh yeah, this is how this functional method works. But I'd say if you want to progress as fast as possible, what you should be doing is every time there's an error or you don't know how this, some method works, just go to the documentation, just read a bit about it just to figure out how it works. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn and the better you become. And that is how you think like a programmer. If you want a step-by-step -step process on how to learn to code effectively, you should watch this video right here. Or if you're looking for project ideas, you can watch this video right here. And with that, let's all keep coding and remember to have a great time along the way. I'll see you next time.